NBA legends demonstrate Larry Bird's dominant skills. Once every several decades, a new generation of players produces someone truly exceptional. One such player was Larry Bird. During his 13 years with the Boston Celtics from 1979 to 80 to 1991 to 92, Bird was the epitome of hustle, consistency, and excellence as a scorer, passer, rebounder, defender, team player, and maybe most notably as a clutch performer. If you take it too far back, what happens? I don't have really no direction of the ball. I don't really know where it's going to go. It's more of a throw. It's, of course me, you know. <laughs> Bird was so sure of himself that he would often walk up to the opposing team's bench before tip-off and declare that he will score 40 points that game. He was such a lethal marksman that he occasionally shot threes with his eyes closed in preparation. Only Irvin Magic Johnson, one of Bird's contemporaries, was widely regarded as a greater passer, and the two would forever be associated in the minds of basketball fans. Bird was known as one of the most aggressive players due to his habit of diving into crowds and even jumping over press tables to retrieve loose balls. The term Celtics pride was coined to describe Bird. He was an exemplary teammate who excelled under duress and set the bar high for his colleagues. The unassuming Bird was a team player who, like Bob Cousy, Bill Russell, John Havlicek, and Dave Cowens, never stole the show. Not even the greats of the game could draw as many spectators to Boston Garden or dominate games as Bird did. In the late 1970s, when Bird joined the Celtics, the team was struggling due to bad play and low attendance. The Celtics won three NBA titles and ten Atlantic Division titles with Bird at the helm. Bird racked up an impressive list of accomplishments outside of his three championship rings. He won the NBA MVP award for three straight seasons, making him only the third player ever and the first player who wasn't a center to do it. He won the Most Valuable Player award in the NBA Finals twice and was named to the first team All-NBA 12 times in his career. During his career, he had four separate seasons in which he had the highest free throw percentage in the league. Bird, a perfectionist to a fault, was revered by basketball purists regardless of team affiliation. Fans of his career were often amazed by his last-second plays which ranged from seemingly impossible reverse laps to stunning 35-foot bombs over several defenders. When Larry Bird resigned in 1992 due to a debilitating back issue, shortly after winning gold with the first dream team at the Olympics in Barcelona, Commissioner David J. Stern commented, Larry Bird has helped define the way a generation of basketball fans has come to view and enjoy the NBA. The humble beginnings upon which Bird's reputation is built may be traced back to the small hamlet of French Lick, nestled in the heart of Indiana's corn country. In a state like Indiana, where high school basketball is revered, the majority of French Lick's 2,059 residents turned out for Springs Valley High School's home games. It wasn't uncommon to have 1,600 people in attendance, and they were all coming to see Larry Joe Bird, a shooting whiz with blonde hair and a goofy grin. Bird's junior year was his breakout year after a promising sophomore campaign was cut short by an ankle injury. With Larry's help, Springs Valley won 19 games in a row and he became a minor celebrity. Bird's parents, who could not afford a car, were able to rely on the kindness of fans who were always eager to give them a ride. Around 4,000 spectators saw Bird play in his senior home game, and he concluded his career as the school's all-time leading scorer. Bird struggled to adjust to life in higher education. When he wasn't playing for the Chicago Bulls, he was a member of the Indiana Hoosiers, coached by the famous Bobby Knight. Then he dropped out of Northwood Institute, a community college in his hometown. Finally, Bird enrolled at Indiana State, where the pressure would be less than at Indiana, a perennial Big Ten power and national title challenger, due to the Sycamores' 12-14 record the previous two seasons. Although Indiana State's home attendance was roughly 3,000, 100 prior Bird's arrival, he quickly filled the arena and led the Sycamores to new heights of success, just as he had done in Springs Valley. During his rookie year with the Sycamores, he scored over 30 points per game and pulled down over 10 boards per game. Sales of season tickets increased by a factor of three, as were replaced by Bird clips on national television. Many fans missed class in order to beat him on the first in line for tickets eight hours before tip-off. In Terre Haute, Larry Bird ball was king. During Bird's senior year, the Sycamores went undefeated and ranked no. One, but they were upset in the 1979 NC Double A Championship game by a Michigan State team led by a 6'9 player named Irvin Magic Johnson, a game that was viewed by millions across the world. Bird graduated from Indiana State as the school's all-time leading scorer and the NC Double is fifth leading scorer overall. During Bird's three years with the Sycamores, the team posted an 81-13 record. 
The Boston Celtics had selected Bird in the 1978 NBA draft in the hopes that he would skip his senior year after being eligible to play in the league at the end of his junior year, but they also knew that he would be well worth the wait. The Celtics' 32-50 record in 1977-78 was their lowest since 1949-50. The Celtics' record fell to 29-53 when Bird decided to stay at Indiana State for another year. However, Bird joined the Celtics for the 1979-80 season, and the team experienced one of the league's biggest turnarounds in a single year. The 1979-80 Boston Celtics season saw a 32-game improvement as the team finished with a 61-21 record and reclaimed first place in the Atlantic Division. Bird, who appeared in all 82 games, ranked first on the team in points per game, 21.3, second in rebounds per game, 10.4, third in steals per game, 143, and second in minutes per game, 2,955. 58. Bird earned the NBA's Rookie of the Year and started in his first of 12 All-Star games despite Johnson's stellar play for the league champion, Los Angeles Lakers. Robert Parrish, a center and a potential first-round pick, Kevin McHale, came to Boston from Golden State in a deal widely regarded as the most one-sided in NBA history. Together, with veteran Cedric Maxwell and point guard Larry Bird, they propelled the Celtics to the 1981 NBA Finals. After beating Moses Malone and the Houston Rockets in a thrilling six-game NBA Finals, the Boston Celtics celebrated a historic comeback in the Eastern Conference Finals versus Philadelphia, winning the series after trailing 3-1. Again, Bird was the team leader in points 21.2 per game, rebounds 10.9, steals 161, and playing time 39.4 per game, 3,239. It wasn't just Boston Garden that was packed to the rafters for Bird's final 541 games. Arenas across the country were doing the same. Bird, together with Magic, was reviving NBA play and making the league's new tagline, NBA Action. It's fantastic, a reality. After only two years, Bird's reputation for high numbers and clutch performances was well established among fans, coaches, and teammates. No one could equal Bird's focus and calmness. He never wavered or faltered, and he was difficult to stop. The time he put in honing his shot as a kid paid off well when he made it to the NBA. Nobody other in his period could shoot the ball as well or as consistently as Bird could. Despite being sluggish and not being the greatest one-on-one -on -one defender, Bird was unmatched as a team defender and was named to the NBA All-Defensive Second Team for the first time in 1981-82, where he would remain for the next three seasons. Many people noticed that he had the ability to foresee the development of plays. Again, like the year before, Bird came in second place to Moses Malone for the NBA's Most Valuable Player Award. Bird scored 19 points, 12 of the East's final 15, in the 1982 NBA All-Star Game, making him the game's most valuable player. The Celtics didn't make it back to the NBA Finals, though, until 1983 to 1984. Bird's scoring average had reached the mid-20s by that point, and he was dishing out more than seven assists each game. He also made almost all of his free throws. Though he was always a strong defender, Bird really came into his own in Game 5 of the 1987 Eastern Conference Finals against Detroit. Bird intercepted an inbounds pass from Izza. Thomas with five seconds left and found Dennis Johnson for a game-winning jumper as the Celtics trailed 107 to 106. For the fourth year in a row, the Celtics have made it to the NBA Finals, where they will face the Lakers for the third time. The series was intensely physical and acrimonious, and the Celtics prevailed in seven games. The Los Angeles Dodgers were victorious in the series, however, taking it in six games. With his back condition worsening and foot troubles also on the rise, Bird, now 30 years old, was never going to win a fourth championship ring. However, there were many more acts of valor to follow. Bird scored 42 points and grabbed 20 rebounds in a game against Indiana in 1987-88, making him the first Celtic to achieve this feat. He scored 29.9 points per game on average, which was a career high, and he came within five points of averaging 30 points per game. In addition, Bird won the three-point shootout for a record third time in a row, a feat that wasn't equaled until Chicago Bulls' Craig Hodges did it from 1990 to 1992. An unforgettable fourth-quarter shootout between Bird and the Hawks' Dominique Wilkins occurred in Game 7 of the 1988 Eastern Conference Semifinals versus Atlanta. Even though Bird was suffering from bronchial pneumonia, he still managed to score 20 points in the fourth quarter to outscore his opponent and lead the Celtics to victory. But the conference finals ended in defeat for the Celtics, as the Pistons prevailed. 
An unforgettable fourth-quarter shootout between Bird and the Hawks' Dominique Wilkins occurred in Game 7 of the 1988 Eastern Conference Semifinals versus Atlanta. Even though Bird was suffering from bronchial pneumonia, he still managed to score 20 points in the fourth quarter to outscore his opponent and lead the Celtics to victory. But the conference finals ended in defeat for the Celtics, as the Pistons prevailed. Bird missed much of the 1988-1989 season after having bone spurs removed from both heels. In the following season, Bird made 71 straight free throws, good for third longest in NBA history. When a compressed nerve root in his back caused him to miss 22 games in 1990-1991, it was the final straw that made Bird call it quits. After a violent tumble in the second quarter of Game 5 of their first-round series that year, Bird was left with significant facial injuries. Despite suffering from pain in his back as well, Bird returned for the third quarter to assist the Celtics secure a heartbreaking 124-121 triumph. After the season, a disc was taken out of his back, but it didn't help much. A year later was Bird's final year on Earth. Because of his back issues, he had to sit out 37 games. Last March, in a nationally televised game against Portland, Bird produced one last miracle performance, scoring 16 points in the fourth quarter, including the Celtics' last nine points and a game-tying three-pointer with two seconds left. After two hours of play, Boston emerged victorious 152 to 148. Bird scored 49 points, grabbed 14 boards, dish out 12 assists, and stole four balls. After the game, Portland's Clyde Drexler told the Boston Herald, Anytime you have a bird on the floor, anything can happen. In the spring of that season, Bird made one of the few glaring mistakes of his career when he missed a routine layup in overtime that would have knotted Game 4 of a playoff series with Cleveland. The Cavaliers triumphed in a tight seven-game series, while the Celtics dropped three of four due to his back injury. A gold medal with the 1992 U.S. Olympic Dream Team, which dominated the competition in Barcelona and garnered millions of fans for the sport with this brilliance, was Bird's final accomplishment before calling it a career. With the upcoming 1992-93 NBA season, Bird made the difficult decision to retire. His playing career ended on August 18, 1992, and he made the announcement that day. With 21,791 points, 24.3 pep, 8,974 rebounds, 10.0 ARP, and 5,695 assists, Bird retired after 897 games, 6.3 act. He finished his career as the fifth best free throw shooter of all time, behind only Mark Price. Rick Barry, Calvin Murphy, and Scott Skiles, after a 496 field goal percentage and 886 from the charity stripe. Bird has been given the title of special assistant in the Celtics front office and given the responsibility of helping with things like player evaluation and scouting. He actually spent the most of the next five years relaxing in Florida, where he took up golf. He appeared in advertisements and movies such as Michael Jordan's Space Jam. Actually, boredom was his primary emotion. He had yearned for more active participation in NBA competition for some time, and his longing only intensified with the passage of time. Staying the Celtics' downward spiral reached its lowest point in 1996-97, Bird made the decision to leave. Following Rick Pitino's hiring as president and head coach of the Celtics, Bird realized his time in Boston would be limited. Thus, he severed relations and returned to his home. Bird was hired as the Indiana Pacers head coach on May 12, 1997. The Pacers had no reservations about giving Bird the reins despite the fact that he had never coached a game before. Former president of the Pacers, Donnie Walsh, said of Bird, This guy is the essence of what I've attempted to do here. I came here because I hope to witness a convergence of the high school, college, and professional basketball spheres, and Bird is the embodiment of that hope. I think he has great potential as a coach as well. His charisma unites the group. You enter his universe when he starts talking. As a coach, your job is to instill confidence in your players. Bird took on his new duty with his normal aw shucks aplomb, even after joking that he hoped he could get the X and O's straight in the huddle, and that he didn't write up any plays with himself in them. He admitted his inexperience as a coach but expressed confidence in his abilities. I have all the confidence in the world that I'll be able to handle these men and execute the things that are essential to win games. Bird was a great backup for three years. Despite having star player Reggie Miller on their side, his first year Indiana Pacers were swept in the conference finals by Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. In the 2000 NBA Finals, the Pacers lost to the Lakers, led by Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant, in a six-game series, giving the Lakers their first of three consecutive titles. 
after leading the Pacers to the NBA Finals, Bird, who had been named Coach of the Year the previous season, stepped down as head coach. The outdoorsman also enjoys country music, racing cars, golfing, and watching the St. Louis Cardinals play baseball. Many of his trophies and awards are on display at his hotel and restaurant in Terre Haute, which he owns and operates under the name Larry Bird's Boston Connection. In 2003, he became head of basketball operations for the Pacers and collaborated with Walsh to turn Indiana back into a championship contender. Bird took full control of the basketball operations for the Pacers after Walsh left to take a similar position with the Knicks before the 2008-9 season. This allowed Bird to lead the franchise to the playoffs for the first time in four years in 2010-11. It wasn't until he earned Executive of the Year in 2012 that anyone in NBA history had won all three major individual awards. Bird resigned as president of basketball operations for the Pacers following the 2011-12 season, citing health concerns. After the 2010-11 season, when the Pacers were on the upswing, he claimed he was ready to depart. For several years, he and owner Herb Simon had talked about when he would leave. In 2013, Bird resumed his previous position with the Pacers, and he remained in that capacity until 2017, when he stepped down to take on an advising role with the team.